Ready, Abs? Are you ready to drop the <laughs> beat? Hey, DJ. There was a song about mm -hmm. it, the foreshadow. Okay. This is Glenn Morrison in his love oh. called Goodbye. Oh, this is the first verse. Okay. We gotta get to the chorus. Yeah, we gotta get to the chorus. Okay. Uh, Twitch, can we fast forward? <laughs> <laughs> here it comes, here it comes. Mm. Starts to snow in the streets of Mexico. It wow. happened. So who's the, 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 this is a Canadian artist, Glenn Morrison. This is Glenn Morrison and his love. Yeah, Canadian DJ producer is Glenn Morrison. Foreshadowing this story. Mm -hmm. Because you think, you think you're not so you can't say that's not going to happen. Right. What's happened? It never snows in Mexico. Yeah, it, happened. it just did. Tash, what happened? Okay, listen. First of all, when you see the viz, <gasps> you're thinking, holy cow, I can't believe there's no. that much ice in Mexico in summer. Let me put things in perspective here for you. Finally tonight, a stunning show in the sky that only a small part of the world could see. The hills and valley around us going dark. It's gotten so dark you can see stars. And it's cold. Temperatures have dropped a good 10 degrees in the last 20 minutes. It's here that the moon cast a shadow on a narrow 200 kilometer wide path, little by little turning day into night as it appeared to swallow the sun. Then it revealed the crown jewel, the solar corona. It was more than I was expecting. It was a really amazing sensation, the, the sighting. It's, I never imagined how it was to see the, the eclipse. This is the moment day became night in South America. There it is. We have totality. Nightfall for two and a half minutes. You hear the birds? The birds are confused. It's the first one since the coast-to-coast -coast U.S. eclipse of 2017, and many Americans traveled here to see another. An eclipse from the Latin word eclipsis, which means to hide or obscure, used to be seen as a bad omen, a sign that the gods were angry. Today, a total solar eclipse is cause for celebration, especially in this part of our planet, where it won't be repeated for another 212 years. Why the allure? It's a multi-sensory experience unlike anything else nature has to offer. And David, your series have been seen by literally billions of people worldwide. How would you explain their global popularity? And also, are you surprised that they're still so popular at a time when social media entertainment is very short-lived and fast-moving and people's attention spans are quite short? I'm not in the least surprised, oddly because I don't believe that the child has yet been born who didn't look at the world around it with those fresh eyes and wonder. Uh, a a five-year-old will... I, I remember taking out a five-year-old, six-year-old perhaps, into, into a meadow in England, and he turned over a stone and, and he saw a slug. And he said, look, a slug! What a treasure! <laughs> And of course, it's right. I mean, what are those two things sticking out at the front? What are they for? How does it move? What does it feed on? Astonishment. Um, and that goes on and on and on. Of course, the time comes when other things come into it. And in this day and age, who is not to wonder at the, at the miracles of the electronic age that he sees? And, but that should be fitted in alongside. If you lose that first wonder, you've lost one of the most greatest sources of delight and pleasure and, and beauty of, in the whole of the universe, in the whole of the wide world. Uh, and so caring for that brings uh, uh, joy and, and enlightenment, which is irreplaceable. That is one of the great pleasures of life. And if you, if you lose sight of that, you've lost a great source of joy. What they see on television is new to them, but at the same time, people who watch the natural world on television get a vision of the world that no human beings ever had a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago, people didn't know anything about the world. They knew about their uh, immediate circumstances, and of course, they, they need book, books and so on, but now television can take them to the bottom of the sea.
and they can take them high in the sky and they can take them into the Arctic and the coldest regions and on the top of the Himalayas, everywhere, and you can see the most remote things. I think um, the paradox that there has never been more a time when more people have been out of touch with the natural world um, than there's now. And we have to recognize we are one coherent ecosystem. It's not just a question of beauty or interest or wonder. The central part of human life is a healthy planet. Scientists are puzzled by a disturbing trend in the waters along four Gulf Coast states. There has been a large increase in dolphin deaths this year along the northern part of the Gulf Coast. Almost 300 dead and dying dolphins have washed ashore since February. That's about three times the usual number. As marine biologists try to figure out the cause, the numbers are troubling. From Louisiana to the Florida Panhandle, coastline residents keep seeing a dolphin die-off. They're all bottlenose dolphins, which live closest to shore. Last week, NOAA's Marine Mammal Standing Program, which Fougere oversees, designated this die-off an Unusual Mortality Event, or UME. They're up more than three times the average, and we're only halfway through the year. Usually during this time frame, historically, we would see about 87 um, dead dolphins showing up on the beach in the northern Gulf. Yeah. So we've now seen about a three-time uptick in those numbers, and we're just approaching now close to 300 animals within the past six months. Here's what we do know. Uh, scientists can't stop whatever's happening. No one can out there. But they are aggressively trying to get to the bottom of whatever it is telling you a lot of gray whales have been uh, dying and washing up on beaches along the west coast but now we know so many in fact are dying it's the highest level in 20 years a disturbing mystery it's a mystery along the pacific coast gray whales are dying in large numbers at least 167 have washed ashore from mexico to alaska since january 1st Beaches along the West Coast are looking more like crime scenes as investigators examine bodies that have washed ashore. They're trying to solve a marine mystery. Why are so many gray whales dying? Well, the federal government just declared a wildlife emergency, and that triggers a response from scientists begin looking for a cause. It looks like it's on track to reach or exceed the most we've ever seen in a previous year. So far this year, at least 167 dead gray whales have washed up on shorelines from Mexico to Alaska. And it's believed hundreds more could be dead in the ocean. The most in nearly two decades. Down in Mexico, there have been also a little bit over 70. So altogether, there's been over 100 whales that have stranded so far. She says so far in the state of Oregon, three whales have stranded, five in Washington, five in Alaska, and in California, 37. Anytime a group of large animals are all showing the same stressed nutritional condition, it means that there's something wrong with their, their food. We really want to evaluate, are there changes in the environment that are causing this? Scientists say that the whales appear emaciated and malnourished. The question now is why? We always want to try to do the best to research and get all the facts and figuring out the why, which is what everybody's doing right now. If you've got gray whales that are dying because something's wrong in the ocean, it means other animals in the ocean are gonna die too. Europe is burning up as a brutal heat wave spreads across the continent. At least seven people have died as the mercury pushes into triple digits again. In Germany, about a quarter of the country is hovering around 100 degrees. And in Spain, triple digit temperatures there contributing to the country's worst wildfire in some 20 years. Several countries have all set new June records, including a high, this is unbelievable, 115 degrees in France. These are already among the worst fires in Spain's Catalonia region for 20 years and the heat wave has only just begun. Europe has been sweltering for days as a heat wave moves across the continent. Several countries have set new June records, including a high of 115 degrees in France on Friday. Weather experts say heat waves like this are becoming more intense and common. We know that these sort of heat waves are now twice as likely to occur than they were, say, 20 years ago. The World Meteorological Organization says this year is on track to be one of the hottest in history. People and animals across continental Europe are feeling the heat of unusually high June temperatures. 
those deadly records were broken again this week. And experts warn this heat wave could be evidence of a move into uncharted waters. A heat wave of this amplitude in June is exceptional. We've experienced this in the past already, but it wasn't this intense. The system spans from the UK to Italy to the Czech Republic. In Berlin, police deployed water cannons to salvage dying grass and trees. In Catalonia, firefighters struggled to control a wildfire under scorching temperatures. Tonight, Paris was baking as the U.S. women's soccer team defeated France at the World Cup. The results speak for themselves. The hottest summers in Europe since 1500 AD have all occurred in this century. 2002, 2003, as we just saw in the report, 2010, 16, 18, and potentially 2019 if we continue at the current rate. And Annette, it feels like we're always talking about records, and that's because we keep on setting them. And in fact, global heat records are being set five times as often today as they would be in a stable climate. July and August are typically the hot months here in Paris, not June. And we're seeing a potential heat wave, or we're seeing it's on the cards right now. The last the last one was in 2005, but that is the only one we've seen since 1947. Not only that, the one that's happening right now is predicted and most likely to be much more intense, so in fact unprecedented in June, and we will be setting yet another record in it. They have seen over the past couple of days, it claims that it's been so hot recently in California that seafood is cooking all by itself. And sadly, it's true. A research coordinator at Bodega Marine Reserve took this picture of mussels frying to death along the shoreline. The picture was taken at a field site in Bodega Bay, north of San Francisco. The researcher said she saw tens of thousands of dead mussels that had cooked in their shells. Northern California saw triple digit temperatures in June as the state sweltered under a record breaking heat wave. On the Kenai Peninsula, the Swan Lake fire has been raging for a month. Officials say in recent years these kinds of fires have become more frequent and persistent. But Alaska's also in the midst of an unprecedented heat wave that shows no signs of abating. Videos posted by crews fighting to control these wildfires show just how difficult and dangerous the work is. Air quality across the southern part of Alaska is now a big concern, with plumes of smoke covering the mountains close to the state's largest city, Anchorage. Ecologists say Alaska's summers appear to be getting longer and hotter. If that trend continues, shared resources could be stretched to breaking point. To their surprise, they rose Sunday to find their neighborhoods covered under nearly two meters of hailstones. While seasonal hailstorms are not unknown here, the volume of ice dropped Sunday is without precedent. Well, you may have to uh, check out this crazy video here out of Guadalajara, Mexico. This past weekend, it brought a shocking surprise. The Mexican city woke up Sunday morning to more than three feet of ice after a heavy hailstorm swept through the region. It shows a semi-truck wading through a sea of hail. It was a shocking surprise for the city, which has had a sweltering summer so far for the past few weeks. I was home and off over the weekend, and I saw some of the video on Twitter and was just blown away uh, by the magnitude of the hail uh, and how it had accumulated. Freak hailstorm in Guadalajara, Mexico. So, oh, Jeff, how unusual is it to have uh, a hailstorm of this in intensity in the middle of summer? Well, it's uh, an incredibly rare, rare event to get it to this magnitude. Hail does typically fall in places like Guadalajara in uh, the, uh, the summer months. As both young and old took a moment to marvel at the rare sight. The death toll has risen to 20 in Siberia as major floods continue. Russian authorities confirmed at least eight people are still missing in the southeast of the country. Torrential rain over the weekend saw major floods hit 55 towns and villages in the Irtutsk region, affecting 4,000 houses. River levels continue to rise. President Vladimir Putin has ordered the military to join the rescue efforts.
It's the heaviest rainfall people in Mumbai have seen in a single day in more than a decade. More than 350 millimetres of rain fell in just over 24 hours in the city of 20 million people. As heavy monsoon rains have battered Mumbai, authorities are warning people to stay indoors because of the risks of such conditions. In fact, it's been declared a public holiday. India has its monsoon season every year, but this storm has already brought the second highest rainfall in 44 years. If you were awake overnight, you may have seen something strange in the night sky. This is super weird. We've had several reports of something falling to the ground around 1 or 2 this morning. You see it here. Something lit up the night sky here in Florida around 2.15 this morning. People reported seeing the flaming object here from Sarasota to Palm Beach. And as far south as, the, as Key West reported seeing a fireball streak right across the entire state. It actually turns out that fireball was not a space rock. An orange fireball lit up the Florida sky and it sparked a flurry of excitement and conspiracy theories. The American Meteor Society reported two dozen sightings. Just look at this, through the sky, it had people everywhere reaching for their cell phones. It's a UFO. No, <laughs> a Martian, it's a little Martian. He says the objects were falling for a long time and there was nothing else in the Southwest Florida sky. Huh. So weird. And, and this isn't the only video showing something weird falling from the sky. Our sister station in West Palm Beach had this video sent to them. The National Weather Service in Miami is even getting involved all morning. They've been getting videos and messages asking what in the world is this, but they are also stumped. And what's really quite crazy is this is one hour shy of National UFO Day. Like National UFO Day was yesterday. Yeah, this is crazy. And so, then things started falling from the sky today. A lot of people are obviously wondering, is this aliens? It's so funny. I, if so Chris is like terrified of aliens. He is. Uh, so <laughs> he really he is. I've heard about this or saw this and what he's thinking right now. But <laughs> yeah, this is so weird. That strange sight had people all over South Florida looking up. Our top story tonight, a 5.8 to 6.2 magnitude earthquake off the coast of B.C. near Port Hardy in Bella Bella was reportedly felt by some here in the lower mainland. We want to get to Southern California on alert this morning after getting hit by the largest earthquake there in two decades, sparking more than 160 aftershocks. Felt for hundreds of miles. People felt it from Los Angeles all the way to Las Vegas. It was a magnitude 6.4 quake. It is the biggest quake in decades there. You can see the shaking workers running for cover inside this restaurant. It's right in the middle of celebrations for the 4th of July. The quake was damaging enough, but then came the aftershocks. More than a hundred emergency crews racing to contain the disaster. A children's 4th of July performance comes to a screeching halt. <laughs> Parents filming hit the floor at Burroughs High School the moment a 6.4 magnitude earthquake hit near Ridgecrest. The several seconds of violent shaking did tens of thousands of dollars in damage at the East Ridge Market. The epicenter, 11 miles northeast of the town of Ridgecrest, near the China Lake Naval Air Base. Roads ripped open outside of town. This liquor store destroyed contents of these supermarket shelves tossed to the floor. A big jolt and felt all over Southern California. The quake lasting at least 20 seconds felt as far away as Las Vegas. Experts say it looks like two faults were involved in today's quake, but not the infamous San Andreas fault, which is more than 100 miles away. A magnitude 5.4 aftershock struck Southern California shortly after 4 a.m. local time this morning. It comes just a day after a magnitude 6.4 quake struck the Mojave Desert. That's just one of more than 150 aftershocks to hit the same area since yesterday's massive 6.4 earthquake in Ridgecrest, 150 miles northeast of Los Angeles. Wait, What's earthquake? going on? Are you serious? First earthquake. Ceiling lights swayed and water sloshed in backyard pools across the LA region. Luckily, this one was much farther away from the most populated areas. Experts say, though, this should be a wake-up call for Californians. This has been an extremely quiet, abnormal time. This type of earthquake is much more normal. So put it in perspective for us. How bad, how big is it? Well, it's big enough to cause tremendous damage. The Northridge earthquake was a 6.7, mm -hmm. just a little bit higher in magnitude, but it hit a populated area. You said we're long overdue? Long overdue. We're playing Russian roulette with Mother Nature. 
You realize that uh, the last big earthquake to hit the LA segment of the San Andreas Fault was, get this, 1680. That's over wow. 300 years ago. But the cycle time for breaks and earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault is 130 years. So we are way overdue. All right, All right. Professor Kaku, thank you so much for that information.